Hi and welcome to the third video for section 3.3. This is the third of the three videos. In this section we're going to look at the derivative of the exponential functions. So in video one and two we looked at derivative of the log functions. Now we're looking at the exponential functions. So we have theorem number six as they call it, which says that f of x is equal to some exponential function a to the x when a is greater than zero. So this is differentiable and that derivative f prime of x is equal to a to the x times the natural log of a. So if I have 3 to the x power, the derivative of that would be 3 to the x power times the natural log of whatever the base was, 3. We also have theorem 7, which says that if our function is e to the x, then f prime of x is just e to the x power back. And it makes sense, right? So if we have this specific function, e to the x, so if we look back at theorem 6, e to the x, the derivative is what? It's e to the x, that p's back, times the natural log of e. Well, the natural log of e is what? It's 1. So the derivative of e to the x is just itself back, e to the x. However, remember that with our chain rule issue, it's e to the x times the derivative of whatever this exponent is. So if it, so e to the x, the derivative is e to the x. But if it was e to the 3x plus 9, now it's not just that. We'd also have to apply the chain rule to the exponent piece. And again, it's y, because the derivative of x is 1, so that, that's why this guy becomes that. So let's look at some examples. We'll look at uh, three examples here, and that'll wrap up this video. So the first example, we want to differentiate y is equal to e to the tangent x. So that means what? That means y prime is equal to, just rewrite this guy, e to the tangent x, but then we have to multiply it using the chain rule times the derivative of whatever the exponent is. So times the derivative of tangent x. So that means y prime is e to the tangent x times, well the derivative of tangent x is secant squared x, and like before, if this wasn't just x, if this is 4x, then we'd have to apply the chain rule to that piece as well. But because it's just x, then our answer, our derivative, is just e tangent x times secant squared of x. Pretty straightforward example of how we apply theorem 7 when we have a exponential function using e. Second example we're going to do we want to find y prime if y is equal to e to the minus 4x times the sine of 5x. So we have what? We have a product here. So we're going to have to apply the product rule. So that means that y prime is equal to the derivative of the first piece. And so I'm going to just write out what I'm doing first, then I'll worry about taking derivatives. So the derivative of e to the minus 4x times the second, and again, I think the book and some of your instructors teach you the reverse way. It doesn't matter with product rule because it's plus. So derivative of the first times the second plus the first, e to the minus 4x, 
times the derivative of the second. Sine of 5x, take that derivative. So now I'm going to go ahead and take the derivatives. So the derivative of this piece, <clears throat> so the derivative e to the minus 4x is just e to the minus 4x, but then I have to multiply this times the derivative of the exponent times sine of 5x. And then the second part plus e to the minus 4x times the derivative of this. So derivative of sine is cosine. So it's cosine of 5x, but by the chain rule, I need to take the derivative of 5x. So finish up my derivatives here. So derivative of negative 4x is negative 4. So this thing is negative 4e to the minus 4x sine of 5x plus derivative of 5x is just 5. So plus 5e to the minus 4x times cosine of 5x. And I know a lot of your instructors aren't making you simplify it further like we could take out an e to the minus 4x or things like that. So you can just leave it like that. That's basically our final answer for the example where we want to find y prime is equal to that function. All right, I'm going to erase this, so if you need it, go ahead and hit pause. Otherwise, we'll go on to the last example. So we want to differentiate. y is equal to x to the square root of x power. All right, this looks messy, doesn't it? So when we had these really messy looking equations that we had to take the derivative of, what did we do to make it easy on ourselves? We took the natural log of both sides, right? So I can do natural log of y is equal to the natural log of x to the square root of x power. Now by my law of logs, I can bring the exponent down in front. So I have natural log of y is equal to square root of x times natural log of x. So go ahead and take the derivative at this point. So natural log of y is just going to be 1 over y. But again, because we're taking derivative with respect to x, we have this dy dx, or we want to put y prime, that's fine as well. And this is equal to what? Well, I have what here? I have a product. So I need to do the product rule. So that's the derivative of the first. So this is like x to the 1 half. And we've seen this one over and over and again. So this becomes what? This becomes 1 over 2 square root of x. We take down the 1 half. Subtract 1, which gives us minus half. That gives us the square root in the bottom. So the derivative of this first piece is this times the second, natural log of x, plus the first, square root of x, times the derivative of the second. Derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. So that means 1 over y dy dx is equal to natural log of x over 2 square root of x plus square root of x over x. So to get dy dx by itself, I'm going to multiply both sides by y. So that means dy dx is equal to y times natural log of x over 2 square root of x plus, you could simplify this. I don't know if your teacher is going to make you or not. Um, this is like x to the half, that's x to the 1 in the bottom, so if you take the, uh, subtract the exponents, you get negative half, so actually you get a square root of x in the denominator, but again, I wouldn't be that fussy with it. I know a lot of your instructors aren't, uh, so you could probably just leave it like that and you should be okay. So that's it, so our derivative differentiate, differentiating this function the derivative is that value there. So that wraps up video three. 
Uh, that's the end of uh, the video series for 3.3. Come on back and we'll uh, look at the next section.